Calitosa Student Broadcast, presented by West Side Stories and Cardinal Broadcast. I'm Madalena Zimmerman from West. Hi, I'm Ben Johnson from East. Both schools are well known for their theatrical productions. This fall, both plays sold out all tickets. West featured Roger and Hammerstein's classic, Cinderella. We spoke to the cast about the effect theater has had on their high school career. Although Wauwatosa West's production of Cinderella ended November 13th, the West Theater is still very much alive to the Tosa West players. With the new director, Tim Catlett, the Tosa West Theater Department is very enthusiastic about this year's productions. So I was hired the day before school and, and then we jumped right into Cinderella. To many Tosa West players, theater is not just an extracurricular, but a passion and a love. Rehearsals can sometimes last five or six hours to perfect the performance. During these intense sessions, cast members often form close relationships and creates friendships and traditions that last years. Oh, I like the traditions that we do here, like um, just like the Nana song and lots of, lots of things that we do is, is really important. The whole process of theater is a journey from the, be the beginning of the rehearsal process to the end of the rehearsal process. And through that journey, people change. And I know that from three years ago in my productions that I've, I feel like I've become a better person just because with every role that I'm in, I learn so much about myself. In seventh grade, I tried out for the musical at Whitman and I made it and I fell in love with play. Catlett and scores of his students have a relationship with theater that can only be described as a deep love. Many revolve their day around theater and believe it to be a necessity in their lives. I get to do the thing I love the most, which is theater. Theater is really important to me, and I feel like it, it just shows lots of people what, what life is about. Theater brings out the beauty in life. By holding up a mirror to humanity, theater helps us to recognize and appreciate things about each other we might have overlooked. Tosa West's next production, the senior-directed play, opens Thursday, February 10th. That was interesting to talk to the cast, but as everyone knows, the show wouldn't run without the crew behind the curtains. Let's have a look at the making behind East production of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. This fall, the Tosa East players presented their fall musical, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. It traced the story of six students competing in a spelling bee. While people went to see the action on the stage, there's much action happening behind the seat that was unseen to the audience. Here's a behind the scenes look. Life in the theater can get crazy, especially the week before the opening of the show. There are many different aspects that go into making the show, from the pit orchestra to sound to lights and fly, to last minute set construction. Let's take a look at set construction head, Ellie Shapson in action. Uh, installing just a little plate so that people don't like fall into the pit. changes like this, the technical crew still remembers to have fun. Okay, I never had that happen. Oh, like, I was having coffee. I'm so much coffee. Are we getting rid of this? It's my birthday! Now we'll meet the costume head, Haley Rathawicki, the person in charge of transforming the actors into their characters. So, yeah. this is costumes. It's my first show as crew head. And I think it's been a good learning experience because so I learned what, what not to do and what to do. Yeah. This is the Book of Knowledge, and I just think it's a really sweet looking. These two really turned out to be what they're supposed to look like. We put a lot of thought into that and made it look like India because she's supposed to be missing her mother in India. This is the cape for that. And this is the guardian romp rat. I love him. He's I think he's become a phenomenon. I, I actually am a stress fiend. Oh. I love stress so much. I like theater more? because I think that this this is the place with the best people. And I'm in love. The production of the show may be chaotic at times, but in the end it all fits together in utter magic.
Spelling Bee had six well-sold shows, with the last two being sold out. Ben, do you ever get tired of carrying the library on your back? No, not really. Well, for those who have, here's a solution to lighten your load. Amazon's Kindle has revolutionized the reading experience for adults and students alike. Let's have a look at the modernization of books. After a long day of school, the last thing any student wants is homework. However, the abundance of assignments is still a reality. With the assignments comes textbooks, heavy textbooks. Is there a solution to the excessive weight of these books? I was reading an article about a high school in Racine that was not buying textbooks for their freshmen. They were giving each freshman a Kindle instead of textbooks. And then I thought, hmm. But is spending a large chunk of money on Kindles a good idea? And can students even be trusted with this piece of technology? It's $135, which is the price of an algebra book. So really, if you think about it, um, we check out algebra books to everyone. We should be able to check out a Kindle to the people who want it. The students' use of Kindles have been somewhat limited, as there are very few available in the school library as of right now. But one student, Thomas Amoroso, a junior at Wauwatosa West, finds the Kindle extremely useful. I absolutely love it. Uh, you can keep notes inside the book itself. You can type them in if you want. Uh, you can create highlights, bookmarks, um, do all that stuff that you need to do for like homework assignments. But why Kindles? I chose um, the Kindle because it can read to you. It can, uh, if a student wanted um, it to be read and read it alongside of it, they can do that. The Nook, which is hooked up with Barnes & Noble, doesn't read. So is the idea of Kindles replacing textbooks reality? In the near future, it seems possible. But until then, go to the library and check one out for yourself. The times are changing for books and politics alike. The recent election was a controversial one and full of opinions, too. We interviewed local social studies teacher Ann Ward, Kean Prenderville, a youth organizer and candidate for Irish Parliament, as well as various students about their opinions on youth and politics. Let's have a look at what they have to say. We first interviewed social studies teacher Ann Ward about the importance of students' political identities. What we know about political identity is that right now, in adolescence, is the time when students are really starting to explore their own political identity and learn how to formulate opinions. So that's one of our main things that we teach in civics and democracy ed in high school is how to form a political opinion because it really shapes your identity, your political identity. And we also know that students from East are very politically engaged and I think that's because of the, the education we give here. We then asked students about their opinions on the election results. Um, I am I'm satisfied with the recent election because I personally like Scott Walker. Personally, I'm not satisfied with the election result um, because I don't think that um, certain candidates who were elected into office are as qualified as um, other ca candidates. We also asked students what issues were important to them. I think it raised uh, the jobs issue. It's big, you know, we have large unemployment and Wisconsin needs uh, good sustainable jobs that are going to be here for a long time to come. And the train, because it's, uh, it's very controversial. They don't actually know if they're going to be able to repeal it, because there's a lot of money being spent on it already, and they, uh, they won't be able to use the money for anything else. Again, at the national level, to step outside of their party borders, that's one of the things Feingold was most well known for, was not being a straight-line Democrat who would vote on things because they made sense. Right now, our country is really divided in terms of political views. There's not really a middle ground. They're not telling us to find a middle ground. They're just like, you're either this side or this side, one of the extremes, and that's kind of Community organizer Kian Prinderville took time out of his speaking tour to tell us why it's important for students to act on these opinions and what they can do to get involved. I think a lot of young people are still, fingers crossed, hopeful that they might just manage to get through it uh, unscathed. But what we're saying is no, there's, there's no way you can run, there's no way you can hide from this crisis. Uh, uh, we need to, to fight for our future. Um, and I think, that, I think it's true for, for young people here in America as well. Um, I mentioned the October 7th protests against education, which I think there's protests here in Milwaukee against the education, but it's on October 7th. That's important. But I'd, uh, I'd encourage young people to come to that, but also to, to get involved in fighting for our future. 
Nyo Jon Shon Chi. Do you know what that means? No idea. Well, for you English speakers out there, Happy New Year. The Hmong community recently celebrated their New Year's festivities. Let's have a look at how one culture celebrates the New Year. Although summer festivities at State Fair are over, there's still a long line of people waiting to get into State Fair grounds. The Hmong New Year, it's a very uh, important event in the Hmong community, and uh, I am excited to, to be the host of it so that I could um, get everybody together, and I, I hope that um, young guys like you see the importance of it and come out to, to see the Hmong New Year. And despite of the freezing weather, the Hmong community comes to enjoy and celebrate a special event dear to the native culture. I'm here because it's a Hmong New Year and, you know, try to show my pride as a Hmong person. People go to meet with old friends and also to make new ones. For example, during the ball toss, which is a game designed to match new friends and even those looking for love. It's planned to be good, uh, big and good, but um, for some reason people don't participate in that anymore. But uh, we're still pushing as hard as we could so that people get into that tradition. This is just one of the ways to bring tradition back into our daily lives and to introduce young people to their cultural heritage. It, it is the most tradition to, to wear these. And, you know, that's, and I, we, I would like to follow tradition. One of the most colorful and exciting parts of bringing traditions back into the young people's lives are to have them wear the cultural garments. It's very traditional. I mean, everyone's pretty well dressed and I'm more dressed and everyone's in traditional Hmong clothes. I have a traditional Hmong clothes, but that is handmade. In this day and age, to appeal to younger generations, clothes vendors have to take a step forward with traditional clothing. I sell jewelry and clothing, but the clothing that I sell and create is the newest styles. I take the old Hmong cloth and sew it into a new style and Americanize it because the chairman does not like to wear the original Hmong clothing. On top of that, the oldest style is not very appealing to the younger generation. Furthermore, the jewelry that I sell and which I make is made for all males and females including little kids. Alongside with traditional dancing, there has been a new tradition that has been established such as beauty pageant and breakdancing. We have a lot of uh, cultural shows, uh, for example folk songs and um, a dance and stuff like that. But most importantly, we have the Miss Hmong Wisconsin show this year. I'm an English teacher at Hmong American Peace Academy on the northwest side, so I came to see a lot of my students dance and perform today. This event brings over hundreds of vendors to the state fair grounds so people can get a taste not only for the Hmong heritage but also for the delicious cuisine. Well, we just had some papaya salad, so all my kids' favorite dish is really good here at the New Year. You not only can get a great cultural experience here at the Hmong New Year, but you can take a piece of it home in the form of beautiful jewelry, great costume, and antiques. Reporting live from the Wisconsin State Fair grounds, I'm Chichia Vang from West Side Stories. Happy Hmong New Year, everyone. Thank you. Wow. It's always interesting to learn how other cultures celebrate the holidays. And now these young residents take part in the holiday spirit with Tosa West Kinder Concert. Let's have a look. On Saturday, September 4th, Wawa Tosa West participated in the start of the holidays with their annual Kinder Concert. Students in the Symphony and Concert Orchestra spend their afternoon playing holiday music for the children. This is followed by a chance for the kids to play, treats, face painting, arts and crafts, and of course, Santa. Children line up to see the Jolly Man and tell them what their hearts desire for this holiday season. We ask some Santa supporters to tell us what Kris Kringle does and how he does it. He gives you presents and, he, um, and his elves make them. And he, he's nice. Yeah, present. He puts the presents by my tree and then he eats the milk and cookies that we're going to put out. Then he magically goes back up the chimney. On Christmas Eve night, he rides in a sleigh with reindeer, donor, Vincent, um, Comet, Cupid, Vincent, Pan Panzer. Um, Fiction, Donner, Cupid, Rudolph. And put Christmas every uh, under every Christmas tree. Santa, um, um, he comes to our grandma's and he gets us presents. We don't. Go
go to our house, so I think he knows because he watches us go to like our grandma's house. The elves make toys, yeah. and the and the elves should have a se separate houses too. I think they have a big snow um fort around because. They would need to keep it secret. Santa, please come to my house first. Okay. No matter what your ideas are about Santa, we can all agree to do one thing. Have a happy holidays, Wauwatosa. That concludes our broadcast today. I'm Madeline Zimmerman. And I'm Ben Johnson. Have a great day.